According to Diana Rossini of ESPN, she wrote the following on the situation involving Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. And this just went down a short time ago. Quote, in the wake of an extensive in-person meeting between Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets brass, including owner Woody Johnson, there's optimism in the Jets organization that they are on the brink of landing the future Hall of Fame quarterback. Sources close to the situations situation tell ESPN. While optimism existed before the California meeting, Woody Johnson felt it was important to meet in person. Sources said Johnson left the meeting excited and satisfied about the potential match as the Jets Jets internally are working under an optimism that this will happen. The Jets and the Packers remain engaged in conversations about compensation and contract sources said those conversations already started before the meeting. And so now we wait to see if the Jets can close a deal to bring a future Hall of Famer from Green Bay to New York. Well, based on all that information, the one team who would be capable of screwing this whole thing up would be the New York Jets. But it does sound like... We could be on the verge of this happening. Aaron Rodgers following in the footsteps of his predecessor, Brett Favre, and going all the way to New York to play for the New York Jets. How about that? I mean, and and it's a a team that's loaded. They're ready to win. Uh, I know this this past season didn't work out quite the way they had had hoped or wanted. They had a really difficult schedule. I think the good thing, too, is is coming into this year, you know, with a 7-10 record, it should be quite as difficult, but the AFC East is, is going to be a beast to deal with. But when you've got Aaron Rodgers, you've got every opportunity. I, I said before, I, I, I personally feel like even as good as the Bills are, if they land Rodgers, that's where my money, money's going. I'm betting on them to win the AFC East this year. I just think he brings an entirely different element to that team. When you think about how good their defense was, and they have another draft, too, that they're, that's coming up, I, I don't think they're going to be you know, giving away um, – there obviously is going to be draft capital that's going to be given away this year. I would hope, too, that they looked at 2024 to give away some of that so they can keep building off the nucleus that, that Joe Douglas has set in place there now and, and get Rodgers in there for the next two, three years. They're going to have a window to do something really special. But, man, that AFC conference is going to be so much fun to watch with all the great quarterbacks. And also, I think a lot of people forget that the Jets were – look, we, we can be as critical as we want of their handling of the Zach Wilson situation and how sensitive the fan base is and all the other stuff that went along with it. But there was a clear divide last year for them, and it was that game in Denver – where Brees Hall got injured. Uh, I think it was, was it Elijah Vera Tucker also got injured. He got knocked out for the season. And those were two key ingredients to what they were doing on offense. And still they found themselves in contention. If you go back and look at last year, things were different after that point. If they're healthy on the offensive line and you get that another weapon on offense back and he can play a full season, it's hard to beat that as as a spot Aaron Rodgers would look at and go, I think I can compete there. Like they they do, to your point, have a lot more going on there. They are the Jets and all the other stuff that comes along with it. But out the the only issue for them has been the quarterback, right? And this feels like this definitely solves it for at least the next year or so, and then we get to see it play out on the big stage in New York with Aaron Rodgers going there, and then we see what that division looks like. It it would be. Them, him versus Josh Allen twice a year would be a damn good time to watch. And the AFC would just get even more loaded at quarterback. It's unbelievable what that side of the, what side, that side of the NFL looks like now. It's crazy. Well, he'd walk in and be the most talented quarterback they've ever had in, in, with the New York Jets. And, and that's in, including Brett Favre, who obviously went there for a stint. But at that point in Brett Favre's career, it felt like he was you know, kind of battling through a bunch of nagging injuries, different things going on. You know, Rodgers battled through some last year. It, it feels like he comes there healthier. He's only two years removed from winning back-to-back MVPs. And I also feel like their roster is in such a good spot if and when healthy. I don't know if they have the depth they'd like to have necessarily on the offensive line uh, or even at the skill positions. But Garrett Wilson, the way he looked last year, you add in a, a few more pieces too to go along with Brees Hall when he gets back. They've got enough pieces there to really make this thing go. And if there's concerns about Nathaniel Hackett as a play caller – to me, they're completely alleviated if Aaron Rodgers is there because you know what this offense is going to be. It's going to be Rodgers gets up to the line of scrimmage and he decides what they're going to go with. You know, he's going to be able to control and dictate a lot of that given his, what, 17, going into his 18th year, whatever it's been now. He's got that wealth of experience and knowledge. He knows what he wants. He knows how to get it. And I still think he can play it at an MVP level. So 
it's uh, it's a great scenario for the Jets. We have to keep, if you're a Jets fan, just keep your fingers crossed because again, the Jets will have some misfortune happen from time to time. But either way, look, Woody Johnson is bought into making that quarterback position better. Yeah. Whether it's Rodgers or even if it's Lamar, if something falls through with Rodgers, one way or another, they're going to they're going to have a dynamic quarterback, you know, back there either as a passer or as a runner, depending on which one they get after this offseason is all said and done. And Mike Garofolo of NFL Network reported yesterday that it, it's the, that where Green Bay stands at this point, their thinking is let's get as fair of compensation as we can just get to move on and turn this thing over to Jordan Love. So it doesn't feel like, at least according to that, you know, they're going to hold the Jets hostage for I, as much as they can possibly get and make it difficult. What's, what's going to be really interesting about, you know, Rogers' contract, which may need to be restructured, not only to fit in with, within the, the Jets' cap situation. Um, but also as far as part of the trade details, what's going to be interesting is how much the Jets are, are going to be willing to take on of his contract moving forward and if they'll need to restructure it or not. And the reason why I bring that up is, you know, if you're the Packers and you, there, there's fair trade you know, compensation, so let's just say you're, you're offering up Aaron Rodgers and he's got, what is it, two years left on his deal, yeah. I, I believe. You know, they're probably looking at that saying, okay, we need at least a one, a couple twos, and maybe a three or a four, right? If you're looking for draft capital compensation. And that might sound like it's not enough, like you need a, a couple ones for Aaron Rodgers. And, and you could go that route too. But the only reason why that offer doesn't sound bigger is because he's only got two years left on his deal. And I think there's some uncertainty too in how much longer he wants to play. So you've got to make an offer that just not taking into account his contract at the moment, that's going to take into account the fact he's only going to be playing under contract for two more years. All right, so now let's look at the contract. It's a heavy, heavy cap hit this year. I want to say he's owed, what, like $58 million, something like yeah. that? Yeah. And so in order to facilitate that, the Packers may say, hey, we're willing to take on and pay a greater portion of this. It just depends on how much more draft capital you want to get us. And so if the Packers are going to be willing to pay any portion of Rodgers' contract, it might add another pick to it or a couple of picks where they essentially would be buying those picks. So if it ended up being like two ones and, and two twos and a three, it might be also that the Packers are taking out some of the cap hit that would end up hitting the Jets with all this or, or the monies that would be owed to Rodgers. They might be paying for some of those in lieu of moving on from Rodgers, but in exchange for getting back draft picks, if that makes sense. Yeah, and well, I think it's um, one of the first examples of that was Brock Osweiler back in, <laughs> was it was it Cleveland? Did Cleveland yeah. do it? Yeah. Where they did. Cleveland basically took over his contract in exchange for what, a second round pick. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I And then they ended up releasing him. That, so. that, whole, uh, that whole situation. Which that, the NFL frowns upon because they don't want teams to do that. It happens in every other professional sports league. You see players get traded somewhere else. They basically take on the salary and then they end up releasing them or dumping them. And it happens everywhere. Yeah. Just do us a solid. Here's a pick. And then, and then everybody moves on. I also think, because I've seen this throughout, I think LeVar has also felt this way as well too. And we've talked about it is, well, you know, does Aaron Rodgers really want to play what, you know, how motivated is he? There was a report that came out uh, from your guy, Mike Silver, who said the Packers felt like uh, he kind of checked out after he got his contract. The one thing we know unequivocally about Aaron Rodgers is if he feels like he's been slighted, he's going to get his revenge, and he's going to be highly motivated to do so. They drafted Jordan Love. He went out and won two MVPs. The way this whole thing has been painted and his exit from the Packers and them, they're ready to move on, they're tired of his crap, all the other stuff to go along with it, this is going to be a highly motivated guy going to New York. I think you're going to get as good of Aaron Rodgers as you can possibly get at this point in his career. Like yeah. That's why I think this is going to be fun to watch.